The following video is brought to you by GroundSchoolAcademy.com. Get a free seven day trial of my online ground school at GroundSchoolAcademy.com. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard of M0A.com. And I'm confident when I tell you that no one has ever taught you VOR navigation like I'm about to show you in this clip. In fact, this clip is actually so exclusive, it's only limited to my online ground school members. But I've actually taken it out of the course and wanted to open it up for everyone to see. I was actually uh, just made known that over 35% of students have actually been screwing up their check rides on VOR navigation, on the navigational portion of their check ride and that number is just too high so I've made an interesting simulation again taking it right from my online ground school and I want to share it with you guys today so you can get number one a taste of my online ground school and see what it's all about and number two so you are confident the next time your flight instructor or check ride examiner asks you to hey navigate me to the 090 radial how would you go about doing that? So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and get to the clip. VOR navigation is one of the most difficult things I personally think for student pilots to really get down. You are going to learn so much in this simulation. I hope it all makes sense. If not, you guys know how to get in touch with me to ask questions. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about the real VOR basics. First off, let's look at our little map side here. This is our VOR, this guy here. Now the VOR is spitting out 360 degrees worth of radials. All right. Now you can navigate to VORs. You can navigate from VORs. There's two radials and from radials. Okay, actually heading to um, a VOR, it's called a bearing. Heading away from it, it is actually called a radial. But you commonly find, I myself do it most of the time anyways, everybody just calls to and from a radial. But the proper terminology is if you're heading to it, it's a bearing. If you're heading away from it, it's a radial. Um, all that aside though, you need to know this is 360 degrees. Okay? On your check ride, or just in navigation in general, but specifically on your check ride, you may be asked, I want you to intercept and track the 230 radial. I want you to intercept and track the 090 radial from the station. Now, how can you do that? That's looking at this, you say, well, 090, it's here, but but I'd be heading 090 this way, but this is the 090 radial. It can be real confusing. And this multi-step process I'm going to give you is going to make you a shoe-in for VOR navigation. So the first thing you need to do, you need to ask yourself this question. Where am I in relation to the VOR? Now, this is jumping a bit ahead. This is assuming you've already tuned up to the right frequency. And you've also positively identified the VOR using the Morse code identifier. All right? So that's assuming that already. Answer this question. Where are you in relation to this VOR? So here's our aircraft. You can see we're tracking a 070 heading. And our OBS is set to 090, which you can see we've depicted like this. Okay? And it's on a 2 side because... Uh, green is to, this purple would be a from. So 090 falls on the to side of things. Well, where are we in relation to it? The first thing you need to do is center up your OBS, your VOR indicator, with a to indication. So let's show you how we do this. Now we could sit here and I could click this all day and, and let it move, but I'm going to type this in and show you here. To three zero so look at that we are a two three zero radial from the station okay well that sort of helps us what's the reciprocal of that 
reciprocal of 2, 3, 0 is 0, 5, 0. Okay? 0, 5, 0 to the station. Let me just kind of backtrack a bit so you can see what I'm talking about here. When I spin this thing, let's see if I can get it to, to spin and cooperate. There we go. See how the needle's moving? You would want to spin it and see how our heading's changing. Let's put it back to a 0, 5, 0. Oop, wrong way. So if I can get it going back, 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 and it's tough with the cursor. I'm just going to type it in, but 0, 4, 5, we got close. But you can see what I mean. We spin that until this needle is centered up. Now, we know if we turn to a heading of 0, 5, 0, that would take us right to the station. Okay, how do I know that? Well, let's put that in as our heading. Watch that, 0, 5, 0. Well, check that out. It's pointing us right towards the station. Doesn't that make sense? It's a 0, 5, 0 radial to head to the station. It's a 2, 3, 0 radial if you're heading from the station. Please don't get confused with to and from. So we knocked out the first step. Where are we in relation to the station? Well, we are a 0, 5, 0 radial to the station. So we are what? We're somewhere to the southwest of this VOR. Now we don't have any DME in this scenario, but you would also, you know, if you had DME in the aircraft distance measuring equipment, you would know I'm so many miles to the southwest from this VOR. And that is the real basic part of VOR navigation, found out where we're at. Now let's think about something a little bit more complex. Your checkride examiner or your flight instructor asks you the following question. I want you to intercept and track the 090 radial inbound to the station. Or remember we said a, a bearing is a 2, so the 090 bearing to the station. So remember the first thing we did, we found out where we were. So I say, okay, I know where I'm at now. I know where I am in relation to that VOR. Now, I'm going to take my OBS, my VOR indicator, and I'm going to turn it to 090. And look where our needle went. Our needle went to the left. Well, where is our course? Look at the top-down view. Our course is to our left. Now, does that make sense? The needle went to the left, so our course is to the left when we're on a two indication. We're on the two indication because we found out where we are in relation to the station at first. All right, so our course is to our left. Well, look in this top down view, seeing this line here, we need to fly to this line and then make a right turn to fly 090 inbound. You see, think about it like you're jumping on the interstate. We're on an on ramp and the acceleration ramp trying to get on the interstate. We're heading towards it, then we're gonna make that turn onto the interstate. That makes sense? We can see the courses that way. So, we know flying this 050 heading isn't gonna get us to the 090 radial. We need to put in an intercept. Well, how much of an intercept do we wanna put in? It all depends really on how close you are. In this situation, we're, we're up a few miles out. We're, we're quite a ways out actually because this is a 30 nautical mile view of everything. So we're about halfway there, maybe 15, 12 to 15 miles out. What I'm going to do is we're going to start maybe turn us 30 degrees, maybe turn us all the way to north. All right, let's see what that would do. Let's, uh, let's adjust our heading here and let's turn our heading to zero, I'm sorry, to 360. All right. So if we turn our heading to 360, all right, and we flew that, you can see how that needle should start coming in. Let's go ahead and play the simulation and watch this. So we are flying. You can see our airplane is just barely moving here. So we're going to keep flying along. And as we're flying, of course, as a good student, we're holding level and everything else. But we are waiting for this needle to come in. Once this needle reaches what I call the top of the donut, the top, and that's not a scientific term, by the way. Um, you won't find that in any flight manuals. Um, the top of this donut here, 
we want to start that turn to 0, 9, or 0. So let's see how we're approaching this line. Watch this, and let's start to watch our needle here. See if you can keep your eyes on both, both of those at the same time and watch. So as we're coming in, it's going to come in quick because we got 9 degrees. Look, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. And here it comes. We reach the top of the donut. There it is. I just paused it here. That's what I mean by our needle touching the top of the donut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our airplane and we're going to turn it to our 090 heading. It'll actually be, we need to go a little bit further. We'll simulate we're actually turning here. Let's do 070 just so we can let it come in a little bit more. And we'll play our simulation some more. You can see our needle's still creeping in, creeping in, creeping in. And see how we just kind of made that gradual turn around? And here comes our needle, watching it down here. It's centered up. I'm going to pause the simulation again. Turn us right to that 090 heading. And play it. And that is how we did it. We were down here. We found out where we were in relation to the VOR. We then found out our instructor wanted us to intercept and track the 090 radial. Well, no sweat once you know where you're at on a two indication. Okay, not a problem at all. We centered it up to 090 on the OBS down here. We saw the needle was, was fully pegged, full deflection all the way to the left. All right, so we saw that and uh, we knew our course was to the left. We looked at the top down view and we saw, of course, it was to the left. So we put in our intercept. Now I had 90 degrees off of the course and we took a 90 degree, a right angle, right at that thing. Now you can also take something a little bit more gradual. You could sneak in. We could have flown maybe a 070. 060 might have put you a little bit too close and ended up right here. My purpose was I just wanted to get us on it as soon as possible so you guys could see. But you may not want to do something this drastic. You obviously can't go much past 9 degrees, otherwise you're making a real severe turn. But we came at it. You could do less than 9 degrees and come at it. Just remember, when that needle reaches the top of the donut, you begin your turn. If you need to fix your course, like in this case, our needle went a little bit more to the right. I'm just going to correct maybe 5 degrees to the right to help hold that, to help keep that needle centered. I hope this simulation helped you guys immensely. The ability to see the OBS and see the airplane from a top-down view is a great method for students to learn. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. This is what my online ground school is all about. Great lessons, taking a difficult, complex subject and making it real simple for you guys. If you guys are interested in checking out my online ground school, whether you're a student pilot or already a private pilot, oddly enough, 50% of the members in there are already private pilots who just want to fill in the gaps in their training and learn more. You can check out my free seven-day trial of my online ground school at Ground School Academy. Dot com. Go ahead, check that out. Start your free seven-day trial in there. No strings attached. Check it out. You guys are going to be highly impressed, and you're going to watch over 120 videos just like this one and learn so much. Um, if you guys are on M0A.com watching this right now, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And um, guys, that's all I have for you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you later.